Welcome Wargamers to the Cities of Sigmar. For those who are new, whenever a brand new Battle Tome drops, I kind of try to stop what I'm doing and crank out as much lore content as I can because new factions are so incredibly exciting and this book delivers in spades. In fact, this is one of the most lore packed Battle Tomes in existence. So in this whole week and a few weeks going out uh, because there's so many sub factions, we're going to be exploring the denizens of Azir and their reclamation of the realms. But to give a basis for the incredible impact of this book, we need a quick history lesson. And we're going to travel as far back as the age of myth, a time of unbridled prosperity. Arcane and technological advancements were made well beyond anything that existed in the old world. Races had the space and luxury to spread out across the realms and largely live among their kind. It was a time of prosperity, growth, and wisdom. Massive cities, some the size of continents, were raised in every realm. The gods, like the good gods, I guess you could say, of Sigmar and Nagash and Ilario and all the Pantheon, they kind of maintained this uneasy alliance. But the future, generally speaking, was very bright. And it was at this time that the Dark Gods turned their eyes upon the mortal realms, sensing a large number of souls to devour and blood to be spilled. They infiltrated the veil of reality by corrupting the citizens of these great cities, right, with greed and anger and avarice, temptations as old as time. And realm by realm, they crept into reality. Some of these entries of chaos happened in catastrophic ways. If you want to see examples of that, go check out the video on Akshi and Chaman. I'll leave those in the link down below. And others were a little bit more of a slow burn, like the spread of Nurgle going through Giran. And all of a sudden, these noble empires that took centuries of development to build began to collapse one by one. The goodwill and trade dependency between nation states had become this kind of series of dominoes, so when one fell, it hurt the others. And so this effect was compounded as the teeming chaos hordes grew in number and barbarism. Now, there were good guys fighting back against the forces of chaos, of course. The Battle of the Burning Skies was meant to be a pivotal strike against chaos, but the alliance of order, death, and destruction fell apart pretty quickly at that battle. Sigmar lost his hammer, Galmaraz, and everything just kind of fell apart. It all plunged into darkness. Seeing that this is now a war that's being fought on way too many fronts, Sigmar sounded a retreat to Azir. And this, to me, is where the lore for this specific army, the cities of Sigmar, truly begins. Because the races of all these massive empires suddenly became refugees, pouring into Azir through every realm gate they could find. Much to the horror of many, Sigmar then closed the gates to the realm of heavens. And this is why so many people outside of, of Azir after like the Age of Chaos, they see Sigmar as this great betrayer, the one who abandoned them in their darkest hour. And frankly, we already knew all of this, right? It's been mentioned in other sources and things like that. But after this, some new things were introduced with this battle tome, and we're going to talk about those right now. Because up until now, the story of Sigmar's retreat always ended with him locking the gates, right? And then uh, when he reopens them, that's when the Age of Sigmar begins. And that's kind of where our story has always picked up. But thanks to this battle tome, we now know what he did immediately afterwards. There was a terrifying purge commenced upon the citizens of Azir, where the God King of Heavens decimated his own people. Anyone who showed the slightest bit of corruption or mutation or even dealt with those who had, Sigmar would strike down. And then you went a step further, and anyone who he deemed susceptible to that corruption, because remember, chaos can still influence people and make them do bad things, he killed them as well. And no place was this more prevalent than this city of Azirheim. This is basically, if you think about like the capital of Azir, kind of like his, his big grand city. It was once ruled by a senate of elected people, but they had become corrupted by the dark gods at some point. And this led to a bloody civil war on the streets of the Eternal City. So Sigmar personally annihilated that entire government system and instilled a new one. 240 leaders were appointed from various cities and districts, totally based on merit rather than race or income or anything like that. But when you think about that, 
This time period must have been absolute pandemonium. You have a massive destabilization in government in Azir, which is the place where everyone's running to, right? So now you have this refugee crisis of hundreds and thousands pouring in from different realm gates. All of a sudden, these different civilizations with their own histories are clashing, different races, beliefs, income, etc. And all of a sudden, you're running towards this god, Sigmar, for safety, and he's lightning murdering a massive number of people that he deems bad without justifying to anybody. And it's very quickly, you can tell, like, this is a, this is a terrifying notion. And it really paints a picture of that being an even darker time and even for the survivors like nobody got away scot-free and i actually like that i like that it's not as simple as like oh we just shut our doors it's like no there was this big upheaval even within azir they were also affected by the forces of chaos to the point where the gods had to do a purge but the same thing always seems to happen even when things are at their worst and that is that a new normal develops once the purges subsided and the doors were closed the refugees began to spread across the realm of heaven and found homesteads. A new normal developed. Sigmar turned his eye from defense to offense, kind of coming up with this long-term plan of building an army, which we would then later on know as the Stormcast Eternals. And we know that side of the story, but let's focus on the mortals, right? The, the Duarden, the elves, the humans, all those things. And we're going to fast forward just a bit. The Age of Chaos is ravaging every other realm, and it goes on for a couple hundred years. We don't have an exact number, uh, but it goes on for quite a while, multiple generations at least. But in Azir, we still have some of these massive cities where order is kind of trying to rebuild itself. But now they are densely populated with a big mix of races. And just like Sigmar, which is interesting, everyone is focused on reclaiming the realms. Which is interesting that everyone's so focused, like they're all on the same page about getting back out there and taking what was theirs back. And they're focused on that, or again, for hundreds of years, multiple generations. And the idea of, of taking what was lost to them never went away. And just as Sigmar was immediately drawing up plans for what we would now know as the Stormcast, the mortals were planning exactly how to reclaim their lands, right? Land ownership was planned, Packs were made, financial backers were put in place, expeditions were orchestrated. And if you want to see what this looks like, it's, that doesn't happen um, when the gates first open, but if you look at the book Black Pyramid by Josh Reynolds, we actually get a really cool insight into what this kind of thing was like. Uh, basically, we see Cities of Sigmar leaders arguing. Uh, they had joined forces to retake this set of ancient lands. The humans who used to have it were able to trace their lineage back to owning the city, like through aristocracy things. Uh, but they had to pay the Dwarden to use their cannons with the spoils of war. And a prominent family would reap income from the newly established city. So there's this whole kind of like everyone's working together to plan out how to reclaim this area that was lost to chaos. It's a really cool snippet towards the early part of that book. And so the colonization of the realms, or I should say the recolonization, ha has a lot of hands in the pot, right? And, and entitlement is being argued about a lot where you have somebody saying, you know, my forefathers lived here, this land is mine. And somebody else will say, yeah, but my men died for it last week. So it kind of seems like it's mine. But those are the, the internal struggles and politics that I find fascinating because the political and military tension adds layers of intrigue to this world, and it makes for really fun storytelling. And it certainly makes places that you can get invested in. If you have a, re a reason why there's tension for this area between the different owners of it and the different aristocrats, it's a fun little setting. So all of that is happening, all the planning and the deals and the packs, and finally Sigmar opens the gates, beginning the Age of Sigmar. The opening war was to seize control of realm gates, these incredibly important strategic locations. But the next grand act was like this kind of reclamation of the realms to reseed them with these bastions of hope and order. Now at most of these important locations, Sigmar erected storm keeps. These are kind of like bases within the realms for their storm hosts to be able to more rapidly deploy from Azir. So everyone was kind of trained in Azir, that's where you get reforged, but you have your base outside amongst the realms for logistical reasons, for being able to like redeploy very quickly within a realm, those kinds of things. And slowly, around the safety of these storm keeps, mortals started to take back their homes. 
The scattered survivors locked out of Azir, the dregs of humanity and elves and Dwarden who were just lost, start, started to come towards these cities seeking food and rest. And that's how the armies of mortals began to creep out of the realm of heavens and start building. And so they would build like an outpost outside of the Stormkeep, which grew into a town, which grew into a city, which grew into something closer to like a city state, right? A mega city, if you will. And as the darkness was pushed back by like the Sigmarite fist of the Stormcast, life flourished in its wake. And it, but it wasn't easy. There's always roving bands of orcs and chaos and all kinds of stuff. But uh, the, the actual idea was that Stormcast would come, push back the darkness, and then mortals would be able to reclaim what they had lost. And the timeline kind of skips around a bit after we know that these first cities have been established. But we know they have their fair share of problems. The Seasons of War campaign, which came out, I think it's that first year, maybe the year after, of Age of Sigmar's launch, saw the forces of order trying to keep their foothold in the realm when they were still fledgling cities. Like I said before, roving band of orcs, uh, chaos war bands, hordes of death armies, that kind of stuff, all pushed back against the line in the sand that Sigmar had dug. Then after that, Zinch became ascendant, creating secret cults right in the heart of these fortified cities. And purges happen, which is never good. The populace was still uneasy about their Stormcast Eternal, quote unquote, protectors, being the judge and jury and executioner of people they thought were being infiltrated by chaos. Lastly, and most recently, the Necroquake erected hordes of night haunt and skeletons at the gates of every city in the realm big or small this is a lot of like major events that have all smashed against these cities right i mean they have fortified themselves in a way to be able to handle just about anything but not everything is bad it's also some great things happened like taking in these scattered survivors and races uh, from all over the realms being able to reclaim the lands of their ancestors, and by going out into the realms, they were able to find the carriage and overlords and introducing them to a new kind of trade and transportation, so all of a sudden, society can more rapidly grow and spread. So all of that being said, where do the cities of Sigmar stand lore-wise now? Well, they're in this position where they are extremely hopeful with this kind of slight undercurrent of uneasiness. All the major cities in this book are strong and fortified, right? They're ready for to brave these kinds of attacks that we mentioned earlier and have stood the test of time. However, every city has its own struggles, whether it's the natural dangers of the environment they live in, or they just don't like living under the rule and thumb of whatever Stormcast Eternal Chamber is garrisoned there. And these tensions sometimes drive some out of the safety of these mega cities, and they found new, smaller locations around the realms. And with the founding of every outpost or farmland, the tide of darkness is pushed back just a little bit more. So that is a base history of the cities of Sigmar, and then pretty much brings them up to the current timeline, right? The last thing we, I guess you could say we really knew about them is they must have survived the Necroquake, where all the hordes of undead at their doors. We know that they at least survived that. Now it's important to note before I begin this week's content, or several videos of content, that this book only covers major cities in the realms of Giran, which is the realm of life, and Akshi, realm of fire. But we are, of course, led to believe that there are larger settlements in other realms. Like Chaman, for example, was a uh, realm of metal, was one of the ones that the first that we went to inhabit during the Realmgate War. So it leads you to believe that cities exist elsewhere. It's just that this book specifically covers seven in those two realms. And while I'm okay with that sort of limited scope right now, I do want to see it expanded in the future. So with all that out of the way, let's talk about what is cool about the cities of Sigmar. First off, the major standout for me personally was getting a glimpse into Sigmar's Purge. We've never had much detail in lengths about how he went out rooting chaos out of the realm of Azir once the doors shut. We know he shut them, and we know he probably got rid of a few things, but it really drives home how terrifying of a time this really was. Complete reform, purging, and destruction. And I think it adds a lot more darkness to those moments, and it gives all the citizens a legitimate reason not to trust Sigmar. We've encountered in some of the Black Library books where some mortals will revere Sigmar. You know, he's the sole deity, super hyper faithful and religious. And then others are like, 
I, I don't trust that because he's not like me. You know what I mean? And, and, and that kind of internal tension of like, they all have a reason to not really like him or not trust him if their families were decimated back at this point. I want to know more about that time. I'd love, love a story of a, like a family that was dislodged from their homes and they had to become refugees, run into his ear, and then survive this onslaught and how they kind of deal with that. I think that would be an incredible read. The second thing that stands out to me is the slamming together of these various races and all of them having a singular goal, which is the reclamation of the realms. And I mentioned this too with the Carriage and Overlords book, that I love it when these folks are put into an impossible situation and they need to figure out a way to survive, which turns into a plan to thrive. In this case, it's everyone plotting down their lineage, what lands they want, right? What, what, what they used to own back in the old realms, and then working together in a way to get that back, to get it done, to re-bring life into the mortal realms. And in so doing, breed an entire civilization of trade, commerce, and martial power. So for example, if, say, a human aristocrat says, you know, this land was the home of my forefathers, I want it. He has to hire some Ironwald arsenal to shoot up the land and get rid of the chaos forces there. Okay, well that means the Ironwald arsenal, they need to build and design guns, which breeds manufacturing and all this kinds of stuff, and so you can instantly see how this huge influx of different races and artisans and technology, even though it's all in the worst time period in Azir history, breeds commerce and civilization and a plan of action to go back and immediately take back what was lost. Everyone being focused on the same t thing, right, directly leads to the success of all the races and their interests. And that doesn't end when these cities are built. All of them live together in the cities, they fight together, they spread out together. And while there are tensions, there are personality conflicts and all this kinds of stuff, it's all, uh, that, like I said, Black Library, uh, Black Pyramid by Josh Reynolds is a great depiction of the tensions there. On the whole, the forces of mortals that came from Azir to rebuild and breathe life back into the realms are working together to do so. So friends, those are the introductions to the cities of Sigmar. How this is going to work is in the next two videos, I'm going to cover the cities that are in the realm of fire, the cities that are in the realm of life. And this battle tome is unique where it doesn't give you lore for each individual unit, but it kind of groups them based on their race. So there's like free peoples, there's the collegiate arcane, there's scourge privateers. And so I'm going to be basically making videos based off of those mini sections, along with any lore I can find about the various units in them. I've had a ton of requests for various ones over the years. People always want to know about Dispossessed and they want to know about Scourge Rapporteurs, all this kinds of stuff. I will get to all of them. It'll just take a little bit of time because there's a lot, like I said, in this book. It's a book to get excited about if you're a lore nut. And with that all being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Tell me in the comments below what are you most excited about when it comes to this book. Either it's playing the game, like the rules for the actual book, or if it's about the lore and that kind of thing. Let me know and we'll continue the conversation down below. Thank you so much for watching, and happy wargaming.